yeah, it's about managing your schedule and not like feeling like you need to do like 10 things in a day, you know, like really give yourself room to breathe. And that's something that I really got to learn in this pandemic because I did not give myself enough room to breathe for the longest time. And it's very dangerous, you can burn out. Actor, host, and producer Naomi Kyle is arguably one of the most recognizable figures in the video game industry. And I am so excited to have her as our featured move maker today. Now, I first met Naomi at TwitchCon in 2019, and I was instantly drawn to her professionalism and her work ethic. I knew from the start that she was someone that I wanted to work with and find opportunities to help support her. Why? Because Naomi is a doer who isn't afraid to branch outside of her box. In fact, that's a conversation that we dive into on today's show. And she may be most popularly known for being a host, but I've always considered Naomi as a savvy media entrepreneur who continues to utilize her diverse range of skills to maximize opportunities for her business. From hosting and acting, modeling, singing, producing, and pitching new show formats that she is constantly concepting, she isn't afraid to reach outside of her box and try new things. So let's get to know today's move maker, Naomi Kyle. So happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. I, I, uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to this since, because you're really good at planning. I just want to say. <laughs> You actually were like, I've got the questions ahead of time. You were like, here's your calendar invite. I was like, this is the dream. <laughs> Makes it so easy. You're the second person who said that. <laughs> and I, to me, it's like the biggest compliment. It's true. I want, like, my whole goal is like, you are going out of your way. Like, I feel like you are helping me. Like, yeah. you know, and Aww. so it's like, I want to make sure you're comfortable. I want to make sure you're prepared. And, you know, like, I hate going into situations where I'm like, what? I don't What's know. Going on? Yeah. I'm I hear. So many people do it like that, too, yeah. where they're just like, we're used to doing this on the fly on our own time. So we don't really accommodate people that we're just like, here's the address. See you there. Oh, wait, I forgot to give you this. Oh, I forgot mm -hmm. to give you that. You're just like on the ball with everything. You made yes. it so smooth. I yes. appreciate that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, to get us started, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? So my name's Naomi Kyle, and I've been a... Mostly a host, so like, you know, on-camera host, not somebody who hosts a restaurant, obviously, but <laughs> I do a lot of um, like on-camera hosting for video game companies. Uh, primarily my one gig that, you know, kind of launched my career was IGN and um, did so many videos for them, like, I don't know, probably in the thousands mm -hmm. and uh, would host their daily news show uh, called The Daily Fix for pretty much every day of my life up until 2017. So 2011 to 2017, I was wow. there seven years and uh, decided to branch out and do my own thing. And uh, now I do producing, um, launched into music EP. <laughs> I yes. do, I do, uh, I still do hosting a lot and like influencer stuff. Um, but, you know, trying to branch out and do different things now. One thing that I'm always so impressed by with you, and I think I've said this to you before, is like you're not afraid to try new things and to like re outside of your box, if you will. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people feel the pressure of like, I'm a host, I need to stay as a host, or I right. talk about games, I need to talk, only talk about games. But like, who else do you know is like, I want to release an EP. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, tell me more about that. Right. Well, um, I totally agree with you that like, for the longest time, I was like, stay in your lane, you mm -hmm. know, do your, you're good at hosting, like, just do that. Yeah. It's your bread and butter. And, um, but I really... Uh, you know, and it kind of was a thing at IGN where there were other musically talented people and they would release albums and different style of music than me. But I still got inspired by that. And I think for me, it was just like, well, it also has to do with my background. So I, st I started in music before anything else, before like right after high school, I got into a music program at Vanier College in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to get into, but I like barely passed the line and I got in. And uh, so I did a year of like classical and jazz vocal training, mm -hmm. uh, training the voice itself. And, uh, you know, it required ear training uh, classes and uh, theory, which was the part of the music side I didn't really understand as much because I uh, just didn't have, you know, my where, where I went to school primarily, there was no music program. There was no mm -hmm. um, uh, not, not a lot of art stuff. So I kind of came in blind. I didn't have private courses either. I kind of like 
through tacked on a couple private courses before I went to the audition for the the program, mm -hmm. but it took me a minute to like get used to learning theory and ear training. And so for me, it was like this big challenge. I ended up quitting <laughs> because um, I was like, I'm barely passing my classes and I need to do something that's hopefully going to actually make money down the line. So I was like, oh, yeah, film. Perfect. So easy. <laughs> uh, so I did film communications. It did have a communication side, which was like more media training or yeah. like learning about how, you know, the commercial side of uh, film and, and video and um graduated on with that and um so th that's kind of my background it's always been like a part of me mm -hmm. I always have been super big into music always love singing that was my instrument and and um and I was always in, in like musical circles too like while throughout all of college I was working at music Steve's music store which is a very famous Montreal mm -hmm. store where you can go buy you know guitars drums guitar strings I was like mostly uh, a salesperson on the weekends during college selling uh, guitar strings and like tuners and you know guitar straps and a bunch of stuff like that and for me it was like it was this really cool job that I had that I did that was still in the music scene but not like actually pursuing musical stuff and then I was doing college in, on the side and so for me it was um it was like always just a part of me and so when I finally quit IGN and I had already been working a bit on my own, like doing garage band songs and like working with um, like other producers. Like I had a okay. producer friend from college and stuff and uh, we were kind of playing around with some songs and I don't know, I've been holding on to some of those songs on the EP for like five years. <laughs> and so it took me that long to finally yeah. release it and say okay I'm ready to put it out there but it is a nerve-wracking thing because mm -hmm. it's like not what you're known for and music is a very vulnerable thing and I don't think people realize like when you're putting yourself out there mm -hmm. and singing a song and putting your heart out mm -hmm. it's it's just super it's I don't know it's vulnerable it's like Ugh. Yeah. well how I mean I feel like everyone I've, I've listened I thought it was awesome oh, and I think you. your voice is so angelic and oh, like thanks. sweet so me yeah, I really enjoyed it and I was able to learn something <laughs> new about you like did yeah. you find that your community reacted similarly? Yeah, they were all like, what, you can sing? And they they all really had some positive stuff to say. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the, of course, troll outlier person who's going to say something negative. Um, but I really held on to the fact that I really like this music. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter if anybody doesn't like it mm -hmm. or, you know, because it could have totally backfired where people were like, this sucks. Like, why are you putting <laughs> this? Stop, like, stay in your lane, you know, do your thing. But, um, yeah, it was it was surprising to see how many people reacted positive to it, positively to it. Mm -hmm. I uh, I was reached out to my old coworkers uh, for my GN. Kind of funny. I'm sure you know who they are. Mm -hmm. They like game, you know. Greg Miller and mm -hmm. Tim Geddes and I worked alongside those people for many years and so when they heard the music they were like we need to have her on the podcast and so they were so excited and they were talking so nicely about the music they were like oh my god like sometimes you never know when somebody like diverts that abruptly from their mm -hmm. career path uh, like what it's going to sound like but it, there's a curiosity there mm -hmm. and so they were like well we're going to listen to this and see you know, if it's good and it turned out it was really good and they were, they were just very nice about it. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. But I think too, like I, whenever I think about all that you do, mm -hmm. cause you do like, I feel like it's safe to say like you always probably are juggling. I would say anywhere from like, I don't know, three to five different projects or like streams of revenue. Oh even, yeah. Right. So it's like, I think there's this whenever you're an entrepreneur and you're a creative entrepreneur mm -hmm. it's really important to display all that you can do and like yeah. have all of your kind of talents available because I mean you're you said you're a host but you're also an actor you're a producer like you're a business person like, oh my gosh you yeah. know so you wear so many hats how talk to me about that because I think it's a balance but yeah. like there aren't many people I know who can successfully come out with different things outside of their lane, if right. you will, mm -hmm. and find success. So how, what's that like for you and how do you balance it? Oh man. Well, it's, it's very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I do have the benefit of, um, you know, my fiance, Kyle, for example, huge help in, in terms of like handling some of the business stuff mm -hmm. because, it is a, it's, it's nowadays you're expected to be the whole business, mm -hmm. whereas before, because not a lot of people did, especially like talent stuff, 
it was like you had a team and I felt like there were less opportunities for people to run their own businesses. It was a lot harder to start your own business. Now it's like there's so many, it's just the internet has opened up the world to people where you can just do many things. Mm -hmm. And um, it is kind of overwhelming as one person to have to navigate that and like, I don't know, just like learn all these different things sides of you like I learned film and communications I didn't learn how to be a business person mm-hmm. I didn't learn like how to do your taxes or right. you know like how to be an accountant or like what people to contact for that so I really am reliant on and I kind of took this approach from I don't remember who told me this but like how a lot of people who are you know big stars like you know Lady Gaga or whatever mm-hmm. they rely on so many different people yeah. and the talent of other people they don't they aren't expected to know everything right. so I was like okay I'm just gonna hire I'm going to hire a really good accountant. I'm going to like rely on other people's knowledge to like kind of help support me. Mm -hmm. Um, And because for a a minute there, it was kind of overwhelming. And I feel like it's like, okay, now, yeah, you're your own bookkeeper, your own business person. You have to, you know, manage your schedule. (laughs) You have to do all these different things. And um, I think just coming down to like, okay, well, like kind of just understanding I'm not expected to do all of this and it's a lot for one person and being like able to lean on other people and not being afraid to do that because mm-hmm. you can get like bogged down by the pressure mm-hmm. of everything that you have to do and keep tabs on and even then like there's still things that I you know fall by the wayside or I drop the ball on and it really isn't fun, but <laughs> I I try to pick it back up and hopefully like most of the stuff is behind the scenes. Like nobody yeah. really gets to see where I do completely like, oh, sh- shoot, I completely like, can we swear on this podcast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like ho- be yourself. <laughs> right. OK. Um, like, you know, you can't you can't expect to be on top of everything. And, you know, I did pride myself for a long time having IGN as like the place that like really did have my back for a long time where. You know, I could lean on them for everything, you yeah. know, like questions about the industry or like, oh, you know, I missed this interview. Can you help me with scheduling in the future or what, whatever? I'm just like throwing some ideas out there. But it's like I, I think losing that and then having to like pick up all the things that they were helping support at the time on my own. It just took it, there was a learning curve. And mm-hmm. so like if somebody's going in and like doing the same thing as I am or trying to be their own person, uh, run their own business, like just know it's going to be, there's going to be some stumbling blocks along Mm -hmm. the way and that, um, just be very open to leaning on other people for help. And even like, you know, I have my fiance, but I have friends who I've reached out to and like have been very nice and Mm -hmm. offered their advice for free and, um, you know, and, and kind of pull together the pieces that you need to have a stable business. And, uh, and yeah, when it comes to like branching out and doing music and stuff, I mean, Luckily, the pandemic did help where I had more time to, you know, commit to that. Um, But yeah, it's about managing your schedule and not like feeling like you need to do like 10 things in a day, you know, like really give yourself room to breathe. And that's something that I really got to learn in this pandemic because I did not give myself enough room to breathe for the longest time. And it's very dangerous. You can burn out and stuff like that. So I did burn out in the pandemic. Yeah. And like, yeah, I I think we had a conversation about that. I can 100% relate. Yeah. I, and you know, Kyle runs his own business too. And I'm like, be careful of burnout. Cause like it happened to me, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it's, it's a scary thing and you don't really realize when it's happening and it's almost like too late once you do realize. So just yeah give yourself room to breathe and you know you don't have to do everything in this like block of time like really space it out because you'll see that your work actually improves i think women especially have this internalized perspective that we have to do it all to be successful Uh and that's something that like as we kind of get more mature and we like go through our career and we realize that we cannot, like we can't be expected to be experts in everything mm-hmm. just because there's a need for it. And I also think that's like a, a a growth in terms of leadership too. Yeah. Because a leader isn't someone who does all the things. A leader is someone who makes sure that the things get done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if you're leading your business by bringing in people you trust to do what you need to get done that you know you're not the strongest at. Yeah. So you can make more time for the things that you're really 
good at and the exactly. things that bring in money. Yeah. That's being a leader. That's managing your business. And yeah. I think that's a really big lesson. Oh, yeah. I mean, once I clicked into that, I was like, OK, now I can focus on like what I actually do. And that's, you know, hosting. That's like, you know, the acting side mm-hmm. that's producing stuff that's making shows like. You know, I'm working on this radio show now. It's like I'm scripting the show, but I'm helping with I have help of like another writer who's like gathering the stories and I can go in and like do the little, you know, make it Naomi kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm working alongside people who work in radio to like help me because I'm by no means an expert when it comes to how production works on that side of things. So, yeah, I think it's so important, you know, to your point that and as women too, we're expected to be all the things because we're kind of new to this world of business. Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, we weren't allowed to have yeah. this kind of freedom. And so we're also kind of learning the steps mm-hmm. of, you know, how to be a good business person. And sometimes people do work like their job is a salary job, but they don't have to work, you know, eight hours a day. Like there's need for rest. There's need for like creative endeavors to get the, you know, creative juices flowing, whether yeah. you're a creative director or whatever you do. Like, It's not something that we are used to because we're so new to it and we feel like we need to prove ourselves. Um, And I feel like we've come a long way. Like this is kind of a an old conversation, but I still think it's relevant that like, you know, and we're also expected to have kids and run a family. Mm -hmm. And so even men have the whole they have the other side of the spectrum where they're trying to learn how to be parents and how to step away from the business world Mm -hmm. and be, um, you know, full time at home dad or whatever it might be. So it's this like like we're finally both teaching each other how to be Mm -hmm. in the spaces that we for the longest time weren't allowed to be a part of. And you mix another really good point where it's like beyond just like managing your business, there's also these like expectations of being a woman in mm-hmm. business because mm-hmm. you're still expected to be feminine and you're still supposed to be kind and right. to, to have kids and get, you right. know, like to your. So it's I struggle a lot with that because mm-hmm. no, like I, I've definitely been subjected to like feminine stereotypes throughout my childhood but even as like a child I never was like why would you say that because I'm a girl I have to do x like I was always questioning that because I just never understood it (laughs) yeah and I still don't and I've had a couple conversations where it's like even in like the workplace or like in in like a business setting there are times when I have to like check myself for how I like communicate because there's something that will be so blatantly like disrespectful or like inappropriate yeah that someone just doesn't even realize that they're like saying. Yeah. And I think I'm sure I'm curious your thoughts as an entrepreneur, as someone who is a is, is a talent, because I'm sure you're subjected to that a lot. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe I'm just assuming like, let me know. But like, how have you kind of navigated the expectations or like people trying to put Naomi in a box that she doesn't want to be in? Like, how do you kind of navigate those <laughs> conversations oh man yeah thank you so much for saying that (laughs) um yeah because for the longest time it was I was expected to do you know the hosting and not really participate in the creative or the back end or the conversations that were happening in the meetings leading up to the production and it was very frustrating near the end um but I did you know find a way to kind of put my foot in the door and like say hey guys like I want to be a part of this process too and you know I'm just as important to the creative as Mm -hmm. um as I am hosting it and stuff so um and as much as they are so I felt like there was I did have to learn to be a bit more um I was I was very like afraid of conflict (laughs) and um like you said, being very nice and being very kind and easy to work with and not be a burden and all that stuff. So I definitely had that not only from my upbringing, but being a Canadian and like (laughs) always apologizing for stuff. Um, So and it took me a while. I I can't say like there's some people who are just born with that. Like I'm I'm not afraid of conflict mentality but I just did not have that I I ran from it every chance I could so it did take take me um I I had to take a few leaps of faith and like kind of bite the bullet and deal with the anxiety of like being direct or, or you know very um not not direct but like there's a way of of speaking that's like you're you're being assertive and you're Mm -hmm. making sure that you're getting uh your needs first met but also like understood and also to ask for something that you want you know and sometimes you're just so afraid to 
make someone uncomfortable or whatever it is. Like I'm always taking care of the other person, not so much for me. Yeah. And so having to be that person in the room that says, this is what I want and this is what I think should happen and to kind of um, break out of my shell, so to speak, because I, for the longest time, was always accommodating. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Or, you know, you know, like there was there was never like a hard line of me saying no. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, learning to say no, learning to which I know fits in so many different contexts, yes. but like in the context of business we're talking about here, it, it was an important thing that I had to learn. And um, it took a couple fights, you know, like I had, uh, this is a long story, I probably won't get into it, but you know, I had some folks I worked with in the industry that um, crossed some lines and I had to say things to them or I had to, you know, like legally there was some stuff that mm -hmm. weren't kosher and I had to go and like, put a hard line down and say, say this isn't right or say this is wrong. And, um, it was very scary and I was nervous and my palms were sweaty and I couldn't, you know, I, I had nightmares about it the night before, but like once I got over that hump and realized that I could do that, man, my whole world changed. And now it's like, I'm not afraid to say anything. Like now yeah. I can, you know, it took that, it just took a lot of, of struggle and like trying to slowly but surely break through this like old habit of of just always accommodating the other person mm -hmm. and not really looking out for me and um that's like a vague way of putting it I mean mm -hmm. I could tell you a more direct story but it's I, I feel like at that point it's getting into the weeds about yeah. stuff so no well <laughs> but you know what I mean yeah for sure and I'm proud of you for stepping up and yeah. I know that's hard it was and, hard and I'm glad that I'm, it sounds like you were supported throughout the process yes I don't think I could have done it without yeah. the support of the people I had around me who um who they had a good line they they were like this is wrong you need mm. to stand up for this oh, so people glad. telling like listen to the people mm -hmm. around you who say stuff like that because they do have your best interest at heart and they do um they just know a little bit more about, you know, like how to be, how to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, as maybe just me, but also maybe other women out there relate, but it's like you can be, you can get sucked into this idea of being this one thing and this like perfectly easy to work with, never says no, like always down to do whatever. But it, there, at some point there has to be like a line and you have to be able to speak up for yourself um, in a business sense, but also just in your everyday stuff. 100%. I think one thing with I struggle, like kind of the opposite side, because I think I've, I've never had a problem with you're conflict. not conflict averse. <laughs> yeah. But like I don't I'm not like out searching for fights. But no. I also like I'm I'm the kind of person that like. I'm very matter of fact and I'm very direct with my communication. Good. Yeah. But I've also, and I wasn't always that way early in my career, but I, I just reached a point. I think too, like I was very, have been and continuously influenced by my husband. Oh yeah. You know? And yeah. so like we're in similar fields, you know, and um, he's very, very intelligent and like very about his business mm -hmm. and, you know, seeing the way that like he communicates and like, there's no reason why I can't communicate right. that way. Yeah. And, and so I, you know, I kind of took that approach because it's like, I'm, I'm going into this communicating in a way that is expected of me. Mm -hmm. And what I need to do is go in and communicate in a way that gets my job done. Right. Because that's at the end of the day, the most important thing. It is. You yeah. know? And so sometimes I think my underlying fear, I'm at the point where it's like, this is me. I'm unapologetically like yeah, who I same. am. Yeah. But I also know like there are times I can, I have to also remind myself that like the, I think I said this actually in like in, in a response recently, but it's like mm -hmm. the way that, I can't go into a conversation expecting every person I speak to to know what I know. Right. And so and I have to remind myself that more often than not, people, men, especially in this conversation, like their intention isn't to offend me. Right. But they just may not know how to talk to someone like right. me. And right. so I think sometimes <laughs> it makes people a little nervous, like, what am I going to say? Right. Like, you know, like I want to get it right. And it's like, so I feel like I am at a point now where I've gone from like one, like opposite ends. And I need to like kind of like scale go back, back in the middle just to right. be a bit more of my approachable self, you right. know? If See, I was sense. like too approachable and too like yep. easy to talk and to. Then. And then, so yeah, that was the fear. I was so afraid of like going this way where it's like now I'm too far to one yeah. side where I'm just like, 
cutting people off and I'm like, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) being um, hard to deal with or, you know, just kind of prickly. And so, yeah, that was the big fear, you know, and and I think you're right in that. It's like finding that balance of your just your your kind self, like good nurtured self and Mm -hmm. then. Your more business savvy self yeah. where you can be assertive and you could be direct about stuff you want and just it's not like well I think we should do something it's like I want to do this no 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 you know it's like exactly. that and it's hard to put into context because it's like you kind of have to mm-hmm. it's hard to explain it to people like how to be but it, it just takes practice yeah. but I think too the more in your career that you go the more you just know what needs to be done also you know so I think like surrounding yourself with people who can take that from yeah a strong woman is yeah. just as important because it's yeah. usually it's not it's not me it's not you right it's how other people react to mm-hmm. you know so it's like and that that's just life in general that's human nature we're always having to navigate you know mm-hmm. like actions because it's just like acting right every action is a reaction oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's like okay like why am I reacting this way that's like what I often like will ask myself like mm-hmm. why am I really angry why am right. I really irritated what is this triggering <laughs> yeah and so then I like have to like take a step back I'm like okay the intention is good. Let me see if I can use this as an opportunity. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. so so but yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And I'm glad that like with the situation you brought up earlier, that it it helped kind of like get you through a hump that you kind of are able to move forward knowing how to navigate those situations. Yeah. And just to let people know, like it's okay if you're nervous about that. It's totally understandable and it's freaking scary. But like once you break the shell, it's you know, um exposure therapy, you know, mm-hmm. like once you do it. All, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, a sigh of relief. Like, I did this. Like, I can probably do anything now. Move Makers is made possible by Padia Gaming. Padia empowers women and allies of all genders to safely connect, learn, and play. When you join Padia, you're unlocking access to an inclusive and kind gaming community. Tournaments from your favorite content creators and competitors, along with exclusive content aimed at taking your gaming skills to the next level. Make sure you head over to PadiaGaming.com today to sign up and follow along on social media at Padia Gaming. I want to go back just a little bit because this is something that I want to make sure I'm asking everyone on the oh, show. Oh, yeah. Is like, what was your first move into gaming? Was it the job with IGN or was there like something ahead There of was that? a little something b- before that. Um, I, I said, I think in my, because uh, you sent me this. <laughs> <laughs> you're so great. You sent me this uh, little basically questionnaire of like breaking down some of the questions you might ask me. And I, it gave me time to think about like, okay, what was the actual first move? And I think I put modeling or something mm-hmm. because that's really what helped me break into it in a weird roundabout way because, um, yeah, f- throughout college, besides my Steve's music job and, and working at the music store, I also did modeling on the side because it wouldn't always be happening. Like, there wasn't always a modeling gig for me. Um, so there was time in between where I could do college and, and work. But sometimes I would get a modeling gig through my agency. Um, and I got into that because... I kept getting asked at the music store, you should model or can I photograph you? So I'm like, I'll finally freaking do it and see if I get into an agency. And I did. Um, But yeah, my modeling agency hit me up and this was a very out of the like random kind of um, gig because it wasn't common. It was usually just like print or magazines or video. But this was like for a podcast for a video game company called Game Loft. Mm -hmm. And they used to be a sister company to Ubisoft. I think they were like created by Ubisoft and then they broke away and did their own thing. And they do a lot of Ubisoft titles like for mobile. It was mobile games. And uh, they're headquartered in uh, Montreal. And so, yeah, my agent sent me this thing. They're like, it's for a one-year thing where you would host a show once a month and uh, they just want to meet you and interview you and see if it's a good fit and I don't know why they were hitting up a modeling agency for that (laughs) like it should have been we're hitting up you know I don't know for a talent agency Mm -hmm. of some kind um I'm like okay yeah this is totally something I could do because I know games and uh I'm well spoken in English uh whereas you know people in Quebec sometimes have that like uh they're in English spoken but you could tell that they're French right um whereas I didn't really have that so I was like, okay, I might actually get this. So I uh, went in, met with the host, totally vibed with him. We talked about the games we liked and stuff like that, and then got that gig, which was actually one of the biggest gigs I'd ever gotten as a model because it was a one-year contract. Mm-hmm. 
So I hosted that for a year and a half, like they extended the contract. But then, you know, a year into it, I was like, I really like doing this. And I'm wondering if there's any other thing I could do that is more like this. Mm -hmm. To me, it was like, I get to be myself on camera and I don't have to be this like faceless, per like personality -less thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, whereas when you're modeling, you're kind of like supposed to be this this blank canvas right. but this was like I get to show myself and I get to be who I am and be nerdy and like geek out about video games and um so I really liked it and so I started looking around at like what other companies did stuff like this and there wasn't a lot in Canada and the only other place I'd found was like IGN and G4 which were you know out here and I'm like, well, that's crazy. There's no way I'm going to go to California. Like, at the very least, I'll probably go to Montreal or, sorry, New York or, like, Toronto. Um, and while I was, you know, kind of starting with this idea, and I hadn't really spoken to a lot of people about it, I got a, a Facebook message from Ty Root, one of the producers of The Daily Fix. I didn't know that he was a producer, but he had hit me up and said, I host, I do The Daily Fix production and we're looking for new talent. And I didn't even know Jess Chobot had left or anything. And he's like, we're we're auditioning for this, and would you be interested? And I'm like, first of all, I thought it was totally fake. I'm like, somebody's <laughs> found out and is trying to scam me, or I don't know. Um, but then I I was like, oh no, this is real. You know, got official emails and stuff worked out, and then auditioned, and then I got into IGN. So I'd say my first foray was Game Loft, and that was through modeling. You know. Which is, I know, not the normal way, and it's not an expected route to no. take, and it's not like if you become a model, you might end up being an on-camera host for a big video game website. But <laughs> for me, that was the path that it, I ended up taking. But I think it, it, that's what I love about asking this question. Yeah. Because no answer is the same. Never. <laughs> and more often than not, it's like I set out to do something completely different mm -hmm. or I was doing this for fun yeah. or, you know, I never thought that this would turn into a career. Yep. But I also think like the timing, I think you said 2011 was when I got IGN. Yeah. Okay. Cause like that, that's really kind of like at like the Forefront. explosion oh, yeah. of like social media and oh, yeah. the internet and In like Instagram and Twitter were still very just starting and yeah. still like little babies. Can you talk about growing with social media as like oh, kind yeah. of like starting your career at like the same time that social media was like at its at its start? Yeah, I uh yeah, because I think I still had a MySpace when I got yes. hired at IGN. <laughs> um yeah, so it was crazy and I think a lot of um the growth that IGN saw was also because of social media. So, I mean, for me, it was something that was happening kind of in the background mm -hmm. and, you know, was like made s s part of my job in a weird way of like, okay, we want to make sure that our talent have like a social presence and stuff like that. So a lot of my job was like making sure I'm posting every day. And, mm -hmm. um, but it was scary and it was also kind of cool because I got to see like, all these really like cool people doing their own thing like then source fed evolved and then um nerdist and like other places started growing and i don't know for me it was like this thing that was happening but it was kind of i don't know hard to like piece together what was actually happening like mm -hmm. i wish i had had a better understanding of what i know it is now of like oh this is actually gonna blow up yeah. and you know make YouTube content. Like some people were trying to like push me towards that, like mm -hmm. do some YouTube videos and stuff. And I was so nervous to do it on my own. And I was like, I don't know, this is kind of just a weird thing. I don't mm -hmm. know if I want to do this. And um, it was kind of a scary, weird thing. Um, I wish I had a better perspective, but really it was, I was so caught up in the the job side of, yeah. of hosting the show and that this was just this thing that was kind of happening without my control and without my knowledge. Like I wasn't on top of it as I should have been, <laughs> like knowing how big it is now. Yeah. And um, I guess that's my biggest takeaway. I really, I don't, I, yeah, just thinking back, I'm like, I, I wish I had a better understanding of how important it would be now. And I only found out much later, like how much money could be made too, of being an influencer. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, I think I started that maybe my fifth or sixth year at IGN of like doing hashtag ad and yeah, like sponsored yeah. stuff. Um, uh, but, you know, I was growing into myself and I think that was the big thing for me. Like some people know who they are when they're they graduate high school. I didn't know who I was really until 30. Mm -hmm. So like 
I feel like now I'm ready. I feel like now I am who maybe, who you know, mm-hmm. who I thought I was back then because um, I'm kind of I've let go of a lot of stuff, a mm-hmm. lot of preconception, preconceptions about who I am and about what I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. OK, good. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> no, into it. <laughs> no, no. It's just like I can really relate to like feeling like I've always been about like myself like I've I've been ambitious like I know I knew I wanted to like like I grew up in a small town in Florida I love my home I love my family small town too so you know it's very different you know so different (laughs) and um I kind of like graduated to like a bigger like suburb to then Mm -hmm. like Atlanta to then Los Angeles big city now (laughs) and all during that time I was discovering myself more in my 20s because I wasn't home and Mm -hmm. I was so far away so far removed from what I came from Me you too, know yeah and so I think there was like this kind of like discovery like who am I mm-hmm. because where I'm from and where I'm at are just so different yeah you know does that make sense yeah that makes sense and it's like it's uh it is a, a weird it's like cognitive not cognitive dissonance or something okay. it's like a bit weird because mm-hmm. you're I grew up like even I go back home now and it's like whoa like there's mm-hmm. I still see what I used to be and mm-hmm. I, I still get a picture of like what my life could have been. Yeah. Uh, growing up in a tiny town, my parents still live below the, the poverty line. They're very poor. And it's mm-hmm. like where I'm at now, I it almost scared me at first. I, I would cry sometimes because I'm like yeah. thinking about how much my parents make a year and like I make a lot more than that. Yeah. And I was just like, how is this possible? <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. and it, it scared me for a bit because I was so far removed from that person and um and and I made the other mistake I made though doing that coming from a small town was like I made my whole career my my who I am mm-hmm. and that was a mistake like I didn't really know who I was without it mm-hmm. yeah or right, am I touching on something no, there <laughs> it's, it's the we um I spoke with Stephanie Pelosa, yeah. Steph Sanjati recently, and she made a really good point about her transition from YouTube to Twitch. Right. Because whenever she was YouTube, she she was the product. Right. Whenever she made her transition, she's like, I don't I, I went from being the product to producing a product. Mm. And that made like all the difference for her mentality and like her mental health. So oh, good. sounds like that's something similar yeah. for you. Yeah, because now I, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like I'm the one who's creating the stuff versus being the I don't know, the puppet, mm-hmm, <laughs> so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, my whole my whole identity for the longest time was IGN. And that was my life. And so when I, I didn't lose that, I purposely left. You know, I, I made a decision. I was no longer going to be like only IGN all yeah. the time. And um, it was scary. And it was like, uh, it kind of threw it. First of all, on a personal level, made me deal with a lot of stuff I wasn't able to deal with while I was working there. Like... I had repressed a lot of stuff, like a lot of trauma that I had experienced while, you know, working there in my personal life. I'd never really fully processed. And then I left IGN and then it all kind of came swooping in. So just be aware, like be aware if if that's who you are and you've been at a job for a long time and that's been your whole identity. Like things might resurface because now you don't have that anymore. Um, But uh, yeah, when I left IGN, I was finally like given this space of like okay what am I now that I don't have IGN and it was like rediscovering what I like and what makes me me and like what kind of content I actually do like watching you know and because I was so entrenched in that like world of like video game reviews and like how to make content like IGN and so now it's like how do I make content like I like you Mm -hmm. know and what do I like (laughs) and it was this whole rediscovery of like who I was and but yeah, coming from a small town, you just never know mm-hmm. what path you're going to take. And it can take you down a crazy wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> just be ready. Be ready. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, we started by talking about like feeling, I think, more yourself in your 30s. Mm-hmm. And I really feel that way, too. And it makes me ex- ex- it's so strange to say. Excited. It makes me excited for my 40s. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm like, OK, like, there, you know, like I feel about my business and mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to go into like that next decade, which is still a ways away. <laughs> so, like, but I'm going to like, you know, like 10 years from now, look back and be like, yes, you know, like, yeah. as I think too, like so many people feel like this is the path I started. I got to see it through. Mm-hmm. I've 
I've pivoted my path so many times and I feel like, and I've, that's you, good. You've really created your own path too. Yeah. And like that takes courage and confidence mm -hmm. and like a savvy that like you have to trust in yourself to make happen. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, you are the one setting out to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's something really like special for entrepreneurs to like that entrepreneurs have that yeah. like maybe doesn't really go like, respected or noticed by most people but like what you present to the world like for the products you produce and like the your ep releases and like your voice acting you know like mm -hmm. things that you put out that you put in that effort to people only see the finished product oh yeah they don't see the strategy they don't see like the endless conversations of internal dialogue you've had with yourself yeah. to get to that point yeah and so i think it's just like the balance and the confidence even if there are moments of nervousness which is completely human yes right but it's like you're still doing it yeah. You know, you're taking that jump mm -hmm. and it's, yeah, it's about, yeah, it just, it's like you said, you, you pivoted a lot. I stayed stuck at IGN for so long and I feel like I could have left sooner. Um, but it's a good thing I did when I did mm -hmm. because, uh, I had to learn like so quickly how to be my own business person and like, uh, jump into the avenues I want to jump into and yeah like people only see the finished product but like that EP took essentially five, five years, years to make yeah. you know because I'd started little songs here and there on my garage band at home and uh you know sat on those wasn't sure of how I felt about it made a few friends listen to it got their feedback and then it took years later to, for me to partner up with my friend from college Mark Bella and like actually produce some more current day style music and and yeah all that stuff just totally you know once it's out there into the ether it's like and, and that's why it took me so long I guess five years of like working up the courage to do it um because that for me was a completely different endeavor but when it comes to like producing a show or like doing a podcast it's like that's turn turnkey like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get that done in like a week or something yeah. but yeah there's a lot of work that is involved in behind the scenes of like working on yourself then working on the business side of yourself working on making sure your business is structured properly like there's so many different things yes <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think it's okay to know that like no path to that is the same that's right and that you will mess up oh yeah i mess up all the time oh yeah i want people to see it very often <laughs> but i mess up a lot well you nailed this <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs> you definitely did <laughs> So tell us what, what's going on next for you. What's your next move and where can people find oh you? Oh boy. Uh, still figuring that out. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a <laughs> goal set in place. But um, I'm like I said, I'm working on that radio show. Uh, that's still in the process of wor being worked on. Basically, if it turns out to be the way I hope, mm -hmm. it's going to be like a quick... Um, not quick, but like 30 minutes of gaming news plus interviews cool. uh, dealing with the gaming news of that week. So still in my vein of, you know, doing gaming news and talking <laughs> about video games. But um, it's going to hopefully live on several channels and through iHeartRadio on their stations, uh, hopefully across the globe. So that's that's, that's the hope. And then uh, little bites of the news happening throughout the week, of course, uh, throughout their other shows. So that's kind of what we're developing right now. Um and besides that, uh, yeah, I think for the go the goal also for the radio show is to get people like not people who are in the gaming industry, but like people who are outside who might be intimidated by the space or who want to learn more because of their kids mm -hmm. or whatever to have a show that they can go to to like just stay up to speed on stuff. And I feel like there's such a there's still a feeling like I've spoken with some of my neighbors where I moved. And it's like, oh, you're in games, so you make it. Like, they still don't understand, like, right. what we do. And they don't understand, like, they're always coming to me for They still text me, like, oh, what should I get my kid? They just got a Switch. Like, should I get digital or, or physical games? And, like, these kind of questions. So, like, helping them kind of get a regular up-to-date uh, update on, like, what the what's going on in the space so that they're at least a little bit in the know. And mm -hmm. they should only... And, and very focused on stuff that's mainstream. Yeah. Like, not super in the weeds about stuff, about... You know, we're not going to talk about League or anything like that. <laughs> um, but uh, so that's something I'm working on. I know I'm running long right now, but <laughs> <laughs> um, the EP is still out there. If you want to listen to it, it's on all uh, streaming platforms for music, Apple, Spotify, um, 
and not on SoundCloud yet, though. I do want to get it on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the plan with that is I have met with a manager who wants to help me like develop a whole album and market the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so we'll see where that goes. I mean, this would be like a total kind of side thing because I do want to step more into the mainstream, um, like more uh, traditional uh uh, like hosting space so like you know talking more tv stuff uh streaming platform stuff um and try to get back into auditioning as well uh but you can find me on twitch and twitter and youtube and instagram and facebook <laughs> at naomi kyle and that's that's where you find out everything that's going on with me I want to extend a big thank you to Naomi for sharing her story with all of us. She's such an inspiration to me and someone that I personally look up to, especially whenever it comes to putting myself out there. And I hope that our conversation also inspires you to peek outside of your box and consider expanding your own skills, try something new that you've always felt was out of reach. And I also want to take a moment to thank you for listening to the very first season of the Move Makers podcast. This is our season one finale. And I want to extend another thank you to all of the incredible women who shared their stories with us throughout the season. And of course, to you for taking the time to listen and join in on our conversation. We're already gearing up for future seasons. So if you have any feedback or would like to nominate a potential Move Maker, I'd love to hear from you. I can be found at Audrey Adair across all social media platforms. And if you aren't already, I would love if you would join in the conversation at Padia Gaming for the latest news and updates. Until next time, get out there and make your move.